Good evening, everyone. My name is Elmira Bayrosli. Um, uh, as Nadine uh, just mentioned, I am the co-founder of an organization called Foreign Policy Interrupted. My entree into foreign policy actually came with Madeleine Albright. I was a graduate student at Columbia University in, in the 90s, and I actually got a, I scored a job working for um, uh, who, then Ambassador Albright when she was the US Ambassador to the United Nations. And while I was with her, I actually got a front seat to foreign policy, and I got to see the in, ins and outs of foreign policy. Not just the diplomacy making, but the challenges, particularly the challenges for, for women. Um, and I have to say, in the, in the 1990s, no, I, mean, I know this is going to be a big shocker, but foreign policy was still, it was still an all-boys club. Um, so, I mean, imagine the thrill when in, in, after Bill Clinton w was reelected, that, uh, that Madeleine Albright came, became the first female Secretary of State. We thought the dam had been broken. The, the, the ceiling shattered. Women had made it in foreign policy. The women that came after um, Secretary Albright, Condi Rice, Hillary Clinton, they, they confirmed that. They confirmed that hope. We thought, you know, here, we, here we've made it. We've, w women's voices in foreign policy, they're, they're, they're actually a real thing. Um, and for me, you know, it's so interesting because my entire, my entire career in foreign policy was shaped by, of and by women. You know, I, I can't imagine having a foreign policy discussion without women. And it wasn't just these women. It was also women like Christiane Ambampour and Anne-Marie Slaughter, who's actually a founding board member of Foreign Policy Interrupted. But fast forward to 2015. When we think of foreign policy and when we turn on the television, what do we see in foreign policy? <laughs> we see gray suits on, on Charlie Rose. We see gray suits and white men on Meet the Press. And then we see more men talking about, about men talking about <laughs> issues about in, in, involving women. And, and there's an uproar about this. Things like this happen, and uh, I think about every six months, there's, there's an uproar. It's, it's what, where are the women in foreign policy? And why, wh where are our voices? And so I had a conversation about this two years ago with Lauren Bond, who is my co-founder. And we thought, okay, well, what, what is the challenge here? Why, why do we keep having these, these questions come up, but there are no solutions? Everybody's angry about it, but why can't we solve the problem? And so we sat down, and we dissected the problem, and we came up with, um, we, we, we dissected the problem. One of the issues is that, first of all, I want to say there is, I mean, look at this, in this room, International Women's Media Foundation, there is no lack of women in foreign policy. That's number one. Um, so, but, but I think what the challenge is, I think that I, I know speaking for myself, women want to be perfect. Before we volunteer for anything, we want to make sure that we're the experts for, for, uh, on anything. And so when Al Jazeera calls or CNN calls, you know, I'm always hesitant to say, well, I don't know enough about that subject. Meanwhile, a guy who, you know, may, may have gone to Yemen, he might, might, have, might have passed through the airport, is like, <laughs> is like, oh, yeah, I can go on Charlie Rose and I can go talk about that. I mean, the balls that men have, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and so, you know, how do we get more women to, to own, to own, to own, to own the expertise that they have, the knowledge that they have? Because, ladies, let me tell you something: we know a hell of a lot, and we know a hell of a lot more than those boys do. Um, and so, so that's part part of the problem. But then, the second part of the problem is also the landscape of the media today. Today, we live in a twenty four seven media cycle, where you know. Whatever news organization is, whether it's the New York Times or the New Republic or CNN, everybody's under the gun to actually get news out and, and to get quality news out. And so what, what bookers, producers, and editors are forced to do is they're forced to put out good content. And when they're under that kind of pressure, what do they do? They rely on, the, on what they know. And what they know is a Rolodex of white men. And that, and that, unfortunately, is the reality. So we said, how do we, how do we solve this problem? 
So we decided to put together an organization that is actually, um, we came up with the, with the name Foreign Policy Interrupter from a Madeleine Albright quote, which, um, where Madeleine Albright says, if you want your voice to be heard, you need to interrupt. And that's kind of the genesis of Foreign Policy Interrupted, where we decided to create an educational platform which um, we'll be launching um, very soon. We have a lot of exciting news coming up. Um, where we, we provide women with the training, not only the confidence building, but the actual tools of, of, of how to pitch a producer, how to pitch a book, uh, how to pitch, a, pitch an editor, but then also what do you do when you actually get on, on those programs. So that's one element of it. But then the second element of it is we've gone to actual media outlets and we've actually talked to them about taking on women that we identify, that we provide this training to and offer them and, and an in-house fellowship where they're working with the women so that the women understand what the inner workings of a media organization is, whether it's a whether it's a television news outlet, magazine, or a newspaper. And so we have a number of these partnerships and um, working um, working on those. Um, what have our challenges have been? Not a surprise, money. Um, everybody thinks that foreign policy interrupted is a great idea. Um, money has been a challenge, but Lauren and I decided that we weren't going to look at money as an obstacle. We were going to, we were, we said, what are the best entrepreneurs? What are they? What have they done, and why have they succeeded? And so we took, we looked at the stories of Steve Jobs and um, our hero Oprah Winfrey, um, and what they, and, and basically, um, uh, they, they kept with their vision. They, um, they did what uh, Sir Roger Bannister, in 1954, Sir Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile. People said that the four-minute mile could not be broken, and he did it. And you know what's interesting? 46 days after Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile, he ran the mi a mile under four minutes, another person did it. And then, um, and then two more people did it before the year after that. And so what I want to leave you with is two things. One is... Um, you got to keep with your persistent with your belief, but then the other thing is you have to pick a really great partner. And um, in, in terms of launching foreign policy interrupted, it has been about a partnership. And it, it and, and Lauren, I, I didn't know Lauren before I actually had this conversation with her, so she's not my friend. I don't owe her anything, but she is somebody who is far superior to me, and she's smarter than I am, and she compliments me in ways that we've able to push this forward. And I'll just leave you with: we have two events coming up next week. One is on Monday night here in New York at the New America Foundation, where we're having a conversation entitled "Where Are the Women in Foreign Policy?" and another event in Washington D.C. on Wednesday. And I hope you can all join us there, and we can have a longer conversation about this. Thank you very much.